Antarctica is one of those places that's shrouded in mystery. Recently, researchers announced that a giant iceberg had broke free from the Larsen Sea ice shelf. It's been estimated the iceberg had a volume of water twice that of Lake Erie, and it covered over 2,300 square miles. Scientists have said that this ice sheet has exposed a large stretch of ocean, and this ocean wouldn't have seen the sunlight for over 120,000 years. Researchers from the British Antarctic Survey were excited by this news, and wanted to visit the region as soon as possible. One of the researchers said the following, We have a unique opportunity to study how marine life responds to dramatic environmental changes. It's exciting to think what we might find. Using a range of different techniques, a multidisciplinary approach by an international team will examine the marine ecosystem spanning the water column from the surface of the ocean, all the way to the seabed in the sediment. What some people have pointed out is the fact that biologists may find new species of marine animals. If they're found under this ice sheet, it could help us to understand how these creatures adapted to harsh conditions. However, soon after putting plans into place, the researchers were met with some bad news. They encountered thick ice and it slowed down the process of being able to run experiments. This year, however, another team of researchers are planning to do the same journey. The team is from Germany and they got there a few days ago. They will stay there for around 9 weeks and carry out various tests. However, like with the previous team, their success will depend on weather conditions. It was announced that a few days ago the team encountered a large amount of sea ice. The ship's captain then decided it would be best to scrap the mission. However, this team did have a backup plan. Instead of going to the original route, they went further north. Conditions were not as harsh and they were able to carry out a few experiments. They were able to use video cameras and special equipment to capture tiny marine creatures. The study is still going on, but it's been said they've already discovered new species. Our oceans are so vast. It's been estimated we've only explored around 5%, and scientists have said that we have so much more to learn. Every year around 1,900 marine species new to science are added to the register. Over 241,000 marine creatures have already been described, so it's anyone's guess as to what could be lurking in the depths. Humanity has been in a constant state of evolution. We're incredibly intelligent and this is backed up by various inventions and scientific discoveries. These discoveries can range from advanced research into different forms of medicine, inventions of new and complex machines and even the discovery of already occurring phenomena that was otherwise unknown. One of the biggest questions surrounding DNA is what causes it to work the way it does. For those that are not aware, every single cell in your body contains the same DNA code inside of its nucleus, and the nucleus itself works to act like the brain of the cell, and carries out the specific growth and functions needed to perform its specific job that is communicated via the strands of DNA inside it. Genetic modification is a controversial topic. There are many arguments for and against it. However, one thing that can be agreed on is that it has helped us to understand things about our body. Recently, it was announced that genetically modified T cells have been observed destroying cancerous cells. The cells in question come from mice. The experiment showed researchers that these cells actually hunted for the tumor cells. Once found, it started the process of breaking them down. Scientists have now come forward and said that this is promising for humans. Although these types of experiments are frowned upon by some, it could help save many lives in the future. The scientists involved said they've seen a major resurgence in interest in reprogramming T cells to take down cancer cells. Many have been excited by this news as it could mean that trials could start on humans. Unfortunately, cancer is one of those diseases that affects many people. It's the second leading cause of death, second only to cardiovascular disease. In 2016, over 8.9 million people are estimated to have died from various forms of cancer. A question that many people ask is why haven't we cured cancer? Billions of pounds has been raised and endless amounts of man hours have been put into trying to find cures, so it's not an unfair question. Cancer is complex and it's not just one disease. There's over 100 that we know of so far, so it's very unlikely there's going to be one cure for all of them. However, scientists are working very hard, and every year there is breakthroughs that help us.
Mount St. Helens is known for its eruption on the 18th of May 1980. The volcano, which is located in southwestern Washington, was once a beautiful symmetrical cone about 9,600 feet above sea level. The following eruption, however, had a massive effect on the landscape and the volcano itself. Over 1,200 feet of the summit was removed, and along with it left everything nearby in despair. Now, over 30 years later, the land is starting to heal, and nature has returned but the landscape has been altered. Scientists have said the volcano was relatively active in the early 19th century, and it's been suggested there could have been a major eruption during the 1800s. This information is according to the Mount St. Helens Forest Learning Center. Mount St. Helens also had many eruptions which occurred during 1898, 1903, and 1932. Recently, people hiking around Mount St. Helens have said they could feel tremors. After people started to report this, scientists came forward and said there had been earthquakes. The largest one so far reached a magnitude of 3.9, and this was felt by people miles away. What's got people worried though is that this is the second largest earthquake to hit the area since 1981. Although these earthquakes have been alarming some people, it's been reported that we don't need to worry just yet. Scientists watching the volcano have said that it's likely the volcano will erupt in the coming decades. What they're more worried about is that the people are keeping safe during the earthquakes. They can produce a large amount of property damage and in some cases can produce tsunamis. Regardless, the scientists have told everyone to be aware of what's going on and to be careful. It's only when you start looking at the facts you understand how much damage this natural disaster caused. It's thought that around 12.5 million feet of lumber was swept into the river, and eight bridges were destroyed. Over 200 homes were taken down by the debris. Even motorists were stranded until the ash had been cleared away from the local runways and highways. In terms of economic impact, the Mount St. Helens eruption was the most destructive in US history. This natural disaster affected over 190 miles of road, and 15 miles of runways were damaged. The ash is always an issue as it's able to travel. It clogged up sewer systems, got into buildings, damaged cars, and even shut down air traffic over the northwest. The International Trade Commission estimated damages to timber, civil works, and agriculture to be 1.1 billion. So do you guys think Mount St. Helens is going to erupt anytime soon? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. A question that many of us have asked is why are we here? It's perhaps one question that we'll never have an answer for. It's unknown why we're here, but one thing that is known is that the human body is incredible. Two leading scientists have come forward and said the human brain is a biological computer, and the consciousness of a human being is a program that runs by the brain's computer. It's believed that within the human brain there resides around 86 billion brain cells. The soul is something that's made many people put forward different theories. Another recent study has shown researchers that electrodes can record the brain's electrical activity. This newly developed graphene-based implant can record electrical activity in the brain at extremely low frequencies. It's able to map brain activity in different regions and this will allow us to understand what it looks like when everything is working. Incredibly, this new technology doesn't interfere with normal brain function. It's allowed us to see crucial information about different events. For example, epileptic seizures and strokes. This is a massive jump forward in regards to understanding how our brain functions. It's still early days, but it's thought this new technology will get used a lot in the future. Over the years, there has always been debate about the soul of a human, and whether or not it goes on after life. There are those that believe your soul is what's keeping you alive, while others suggest the soul is nothing. However, recently researchers think they've found a new truth about the soul. They've put forward the theory that the soul doesn't die, it goes back into the universe. Dr. Stuart Hamroff, who is a physicist, and Sir Roger Penrose, a mathematical physicist at the Oxford University, have been working on the quantum theory of consciousness. Both of them suggest the soul of a person is in the microtubules of the brain cells. Their theory states that a human being's soul is contained within the cells of the brain and structures that are inside them. It sounds confusing, but the doctors think the human brain is just a biological computer, and the consciousness we experience is run by the computer inside the brain. This means it will continue to exist after the human is gone. 
both of them suggest that what humans think of consciousness is the result of the effects of quantum gravity that is situated in the microtubules. Consciousness is perhaps the biggest mystery. After all, no one knows what happens when you pass away, but many do believe that consciousness goes back into the universe. The universe created you and when it's your time you go back into the universe. Going back, a team of researchers in Switzerland discovered a way of making small objects move using sound. They were able to achieve this by using ultrasonic waves. The frequencies are undetectable to human ears. The scientists were from the Swiss Federal Institute of Technology in Zurich, and they have been able to make many objects move. This has put forward the question of whether we could use this on a large scale. One of the first things people were saying was could this be used in potential space travel? The answers are currently unknown as this study is in its early days. This was however the first time scientists were able to move objects close to each other using nothing but sound. It's no secret that a loud bass can move objects due to pressure, but this new discovery is able to move objects without there being any noise. One of the first things people said is could we implement this into current technology? Some put forward the idea of us being able to use this on commercial planes. This is an interesting concept and could have many advantages. If we could use this energy but on a larger scale it would mean we wouldn't have to rely on fuel. Potentially plane journeys could be much quicker, and as a whole it would do less damage to the environment. However researchers have said that we're nowhere near to this and it's still in its early stages. So my question to you guys is do you think that one day we'll be using this technology in everyday life? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Staying on the subjects of sound waves, it's recently been announced by NASA that their probe studying Saturn has picked up some mysterious sounds. This has led some people to suggest the space agency may well have captured the sounds of aliens communicating with one another. NASA's Cassini mission was the most comprehensive study of Saturn and its numerous moons in history. This was a joint endeavour of NASA, the European Space Agency and the Italian Space Agency. Cassini is a sophisticated robot spacecraft orbiting the ring planet, and studying the system in detail. According to the space agency, scientists picked up on a number of radio waves. After NASA discovered dozens of these radio waves back in 2004, they admitted themselves to be rather baffled by the noises, and wrote a note saying, A most intriguing file. We do not know what to make of it. This prompted some amateur cosmologists to suggest these radio waves may well be the recordings of aliens attempting to communicate with one another. If this is the case, this could change the way we view our universe. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.